1. Does God's stated purpose of creating man to worship him seem worthy of an immensely intelligent and all-powerful being? If you have your son that you have fathered or mothered and looked after him until he became a sane mature son, wouldn't you expect him to appreciate and obey you? Or do you expect your son to obey strangers living next door merely for speaking to him nicely? Who deserves your son's kind and permanent appreciation? You are the strangers. I will leave this for you to answer. Almighty God is a creator, created us and everything from nothing, and all of creation is a testament for his existence. Though God does not need his creation to exist, the creation itself relies on God and his magnificence. It is conceptually short-sighted to think God's creation is limited to our universe and our perception of the material and physical world. Moreover, God does not need worship. This is stated in the Quran Quran 51 56 to 58 I did not create jinn and humans except to worship me. I seek no provision from them, nor do I need them to feed me. Indeed, Allah alone is the supreme provider, Lord of all power, ever mighty. Worship is not restricted to performing rituals. Worship, ibadah, extends to our ethics, behavior, and morality. God teaches that even a good word is an act of worship, as our service to society, acts of charity, and the seeking of knowledge and higher education. In short, the worship of God Almighty is a way of life through which you constantly seek to better yourself, elevate your current status, and give thanks to the Creator in different ways. Smiling at strangers is an act of worship too. al tirmidhi Book 27, Hadith 62 Your smiling in the face of your brother is charity, commanding good and forbidding evil is charity, your giving directions to a man lost in the land is the charity for you. Your seeing for a man with bad sight is a charity for you, your removal of a rock, a thorn or a bone from the road is the charity for you. Your pouring what remains from your bucket into the bucket of your brother is the charity for you. 2. If God is self-sufficient, and does nothing in vain, is not created the height of vanity? Is creation an act of vanity? Answer, if you are a self-sufficient person and for instance, you have food, clothes, etc., and decide to make planet trees to grow food, would you be doing that in vain? Why do not you thank God and appreciate His countless goods upon us? Or do you have to overanalyze things and come up with strange concepts that things were created in vain? We can look everywhere around us and find that everything has a use. Aren't discoveries made every day? And are we not constantly in a state of progressive learning and unlocking the secrets of the world around us? If we as humans had not progressed, had not constantly improved living standards, nor made larger and larger communities, then the allegation would have been spot on. But a quick examination of the history of life on this earth proves that nothing about creation is in vain. As the Quran states, Quran 44 38-39 We did not create the heavens and the earth and everything in between for sport. We only created them for a purpose, but most of these pagans do not know. Quran 67-1-5 Blessed is the one in whose hands rests all authority. And he is most capable of everything. He is the one who created death and life to test which of you is best in deeds. And he is the Almighty, all forgiving. He is the one who created seven heavens, one above the other. You will never see any imperfection in the creation of the most compassionate. So, look again, do you see any flaws? Then look again and again, your sight will return frustrated and weary. And indeed, we adorned the lowest heaven with stars like lamps and made them as missiles for stoning eavesdropping devils, for whom we have also prepared the torment of the blaze. 3. If creation is for our benefit, then what is the benefit to those who will burn forever? Well, some people choose to reject and refuse to acknowledge Almighty God and arrogantly think of themselves to be invincible and are going to live forever and think of themselves as if they were walking gods on earth. That type of people who challenge God and reject Him and all His countless blessings upon us deserve punishment. If you have an employee who is getting paid by you as an employer and refuses to obey your orders, abuse you, exploit your good deeds to them, what are you going to do to them with your repetitive warnings? I will leave it to you to answer. The Quran says there are infinite rewards for the believers and for those who strove to do good deeds on earth, who gave thanks to God Almighty and served His creation. The absence of this struggle is the absence of this reward. Of course, this will seem harsh in comparison to what is offered to the believers. However, as the Quran states, hell is not the final resting place for the evildoers who die Muslims in the afterlife, but like a temporary correctional facility, that will cleanse the evil people's sins. This will make them compatible with the pure status of the Muslims who are in paradise, in an eventual send-off to their final resting place in heaven. The correctional facility of hell is not without its hardships, as we can compare it to surgery for the removal of a tumor while missing out on the joys of heaven for the time being. Everyone will be held responsible, even Muslims. 
It does not mean that because someone is a Muslim he or she got automatic right or a blank check to go to eternal paradise without being held accountable for their bad deeds. But eventually, after they get their fair trial and punishment they will be released and go to paradise. This shows that there is no nepotism in Islam. On the other hand, anyone who fails to follow Islam after receiving and hearing about Islam will end up in eternal hellfire because they refused, rejected, declined to acknowledge, and accept the true Almighty God who created them from nothing and provided them with everything. Yet they choose deliberately not to follow Islam despite they know, and everyone knows that this world is temporary, and we are all going to die. So, everyone needs to think very wisely. In short, life on this earth is like a harvest, and you reap what you do or do not sow. If you do not commit yourself to struggle for the possible rewards in front of you, you will suffer from the repercussions of your actions or inactions. As stated in the Quran, Quran 11 to 106 to 108 is for those bound for misery, they will be in the fire, where they will be sighing and gasping, staying there forever, as long as the heavens and the earth will endure, except what your Lord wills. Surely your Lord does what he intends. And as for those destined to joy, they will be in paradise, staying there forever, as long as the heavens and the earth will endure, except what your Lord wills, a generous giving, without end. It is made clear from these verses, that the phase of fire will meet its end for certain people and others will remain eternally. While the fortunes of heaven are never ending and never taken away. 4. What is the point of God's test when he knows the outcome? Is it just so he can have a reason to punish and reward? Almighty God has given you the free will, you can go eat good food now or eat poison. What are you going to choose now? Did anyone force you? Similarly, would you worship the sun, moon, or anything or worship who created them and sent a message with various logical, scientific, and clear evidence to support that? Almighty God never forced you to choose anything, you have both directions and warning messages from Him. All options are available to you no specific direction is forced upon you. Your ultimate choice is known by Almighty God and not decided upon you by God. Simple example, if you have a pet like a dog and you train them, would you be able to predict their pattern of behaviors based on various things? Did you force that dog to do anything? Remember you are human and fully aware of your desires, needs, you know you are going to do and you got clear signs and messages from God advising you to use logic and follow the right path. You have the chance in your hands to make do with as much as you can. Life on earth is not only a test, but also a chance to seek self-betterment, promote your values and principles and seek constant spiritual elevation and promotion. It is clear from this life that there is a range of different people, including people who are believers, people who are non-believers, people who are doing good, evil people, and all others who are in between. We are all given a chance in this life to discover our ways, seek self-betterment and find the purpose of creation. You can easily say I love God and His creation, but in this life, God is giving you a chance to apply this sentiment and to keep trying to do it better. You have a lifetime to discover what you have and to achieve what your goal in life is. You do not have an excuse not to do it. So, do not waste your life complaining that there is a fiery hell. Instead, seek heaven. Quran 441 Indeed, Allah never wrongs anyone even by an atom's weight. And if it is a good deed, He will multiply it many times over and will give a great reward out of His grace. Quran 99-7-8 So whoever does an atom's weight of good will see it. And whoever does an atom's weight of evil will see it. 5. Can a being who creates humans that he knows will fail his test and will be tortured without end, be called the most merciful of those who show mercy? When you apply to get your driving license and before you start to drive you to get taught about the rules and consequences of driving good or driving bad. The licensing authority knows that the bad driver will be given a warning and demerit points once you ignore the good driving rules. Does that mean that the driving authority is not caring and concerned about you as a driver and other people on the road? It is your absolute choice as a driver who have been given all the instructions to make you a good driver even before you start to drive. But for some unknown reason inside your head, you start to speed and go over the speed limit, perhaps you start to do some burnouts and drive your car in a circular dangerous manner. Similarly, you have been taught to follow the right religion and the message has reached you, but you dislike religious rules because it restricts you from following your bad desires. Therefore, you ask such questions. If you are serious about getting to the great final destination of paradise as promised in Islam, you will be careful, serious and do your best to be a good Muslim. Can a human being, with equal chances to all others, not seek to utilize what God has given to him, instead of incorrectly complaining that he will not get an equal chance? God says that heaven and hell essentially will be populated by people living on this earth, but that a believer will enjoy creation by an act of God's mercy, while a disbeliever will suffer and not benefit from its beauty. All depends on your choice and actions in this life. 
The Quran states, Quran 1971-72 None of you will not pass over it. This is a decree your Lord must fulfill. Then we will deliver those who were devout, leaving the wrongdoers there on their knees. We may compare this to a good perfume. A healthy person will enjoy its smell, but a sick person will dislike it and get dizzy. Or we can use the example of solid food, which will be delicious to a healthy person, yet cause suffering to a person with a sick stomach. As mentioned, the afterlife is the harvest of what you have done in this lifetime, and it is a chance for you to clean your heart and senses from disease. The extent to which you clean your senses will determine whether you pleasure or suffer in the afterlife. 6. If God wanted us to freely choose to worship Him, then why threaten us? Does someone with a gun to his head have free choice? If you get a driving license to drive a car, does anyone from the traffic authority sit down with you while you are driving your car? The answer is no. But there are rules, laws, and regulations. If you drive well, you will not get fines. But if you drive badly and get caught you will get fines and your license might be suspended temporarily or indefinitely, it all depends on you and your actions. In the entirety of the Quran, there is no threat or compulsion to worship, or to commit any act that you do not freely choose to do. Religion and its practices are a free choice, and we all have the choice to either follow them or not. The Quran mentions, Quran 2-256 Let there be no compulsion in religion, for the truth stands out clearly from falsehood. So whoever renounces false gods and believes in Allah has certainly grasped the firmest, unfailing handhold. And Allah is all-hearing, all-knowing. 7. Why does God cause so much suffering to humans? Is it part of God's test to prompt them to turn to Him in obedience and worship? Isn't that like a con man who causes a problem then offers to fix it for you? There is no suffering in religion, the religion was sent to make life easy for humanity, imagine when a human produces anything like a car or a mobile phone or anything, the produce manual includes instructions on how to use the new product that you have just purchased. Similarly, when Almighty God created humanity, He sent the messages to us, so we follow. The suffering you are referring to is because of not following Almighty God's instructions. So, all these problems are human-made, such as crimes, destruction of planets, greed about what others have, and many other things. I am sure you know about that. Islam gives permissions which makes life easier for a Muslim. One of the best things in Islam and everything in Islam is beautiful. I am speaking as a Muslim. Please feel free to share the thoughts of your religion or secular philosophy, is that Islam does not burden any human being with what he or she cannot handle. Here are some examples, traveling? You do not have to fast. Tired? You can pray sitting down. No money? You do not have to perform Hajj. Poor? You receive sadaka equals charity. The Holy Quran says, Quran 20-2-3 We have not revealed the Quran to you O Prophet to cause you distress, but as a reminder to those in awe of Allah. And that is the beauty of the religion of Islam. Also, Islam does not permit any act of self-torture and it does not allow self-harm or damage to others, except in last resort, inescapable cases of self-defense, or for the defense of the helpless and the innocent. Moreover, even maintaining cleanliness and taking care of your body through exercise and eating healthy are acts of worship. So, Islam promotes all kinds of benefits for human beings. 8. Why would God give humans the ability to reason, then punish them for rejecting beliefs their reason cannot reconcile? Almighty God does not punish anyone for rejecting beliefs their reason cannot reconcile, but punishment comes after the message and evidence have been brought against them. Example, if you are a sane and sound student with reason and you know that you must study to pass exams and you need good marks to get into a good college. Despite your reason and everything and knowing the consequences, you still get lazy and do not study. Who should you blame? Education minister? Or your school principal or your parents? No one to blame but yourself. Islam commands believers to constantly seek knowledge and education. Also, Islam asks its followers to constantly reflect and ponder upon the deeper meanings of its verses, the heavenly signs, and the world around them. Islam forbids you to blindly follow and imitate your fathers and forefathers and encourages each person to seek the truth. And Allah Almighty will not punish any person for that which he cannot understand, or which is beyond his reasoning or ability to comprehend. If someone was to receive a false image of religion and Islam, then Allah Almighty will surely not punish this person for what he saw as false from Islamic teachings. So, if there were a person who only learned of Islam from the actions of terrorists and horrible people, then he would surely be rewarded instead, as he rejected a violent version of religion, that should be incompatible with every person's perception of a truly just God. And the Quran states, Quran 2 to 286 Allah does not require of any soul more than what it can afford. All good will be for its benefit, and all evil will be to its loss. The believers pray, 
Our Lord. Do not punish us if we forget or make a mistake. Our Lord. Do not place a burden on us like the one you placed on those before us. Our Lord. Do not burden us with what we cannot bear. Pardon us, forgive us, and have mercy on us. You are our only guardian. So, grant us victory over the disbelieving people. 9. Why does the human body look suspiciously like it was the result of a long, cumulative process of evolution resulting in imperfections in vestigial organs and genes, and not the result of the instant and perfectly planned creation of Adam and Eve? Are you suggesting that when you look at the mirror you suspect that you and your ancestors did come from fish, sharks, fossils, monkeys, chimpanzees, or donkeys or even you evolved by yourself from a speck of dirt accidentally? Please take no offense but please answer my question. Almighty Allah in the Noble Quran has stated on numerous occasions that he created humans as humans and not from animals or donkeys or chimpanzees despite some superficial similarities which do not stand any scientific evidence. Even Charles Darwin's theory of evolution is theory and has lots of loopholes. It has been scientifically refuted, please google the refutation of the theory of evolution. The Quran does state that Adam was the first man and that he descended from heaven. It clearly states that human beings were created in great alignment and shape. It does not mean that there are similarities between human beings and some other creatures that we have evolved from those other creatures. I would like to ask you to provide me with just one single scientifically full documented case for any animal that evolved to be human. Or a fish that evolved to be a bear or a monkey that turned out to be a human. Just one single scientifically full documented case. If you have a fish in a water tank at your home. I am sure 100% that if you look after it and feed it properly, it will never evolve to be a shark or monkey and will never turn into a human even after 100 million years, regardless of the circumstances. The first human to receive divine revelation was Adam peace be upon him as written in the Quran, Quran 2.30 Remember when your Lord said to the angels, I am going to place a successive human authority on earth. They asked Allah, will you place in it someone who will spread corruption there and shed blood while we glorify your praises and proclaim your holiness? Allah responded, I know what you do not know. The Quran teaches that God created humans through a guided process, and not a result of chance or pure accident as some theory state, such as the unproven theory of evolution. In many places, the Quran shows that it was the divine plan to take the creation of humans through stages from the clay of the earth, etc. as per the noble Quran description, resulting in where we are today. For example, Quran, 1526 indeed, we created man from sounding clay molded from black mud. Quran 71:15 when he truly created you in stages of development. For more details, please check the reference link at the end of this article by the title Darwinism the refutation of a myth 10. Which is more evil, the imperfect creature who commits evil or the perfect entity which created evil? If you are a married man and have five sons, you love your sons all the and do your best to see them in great positions on all fronts whether it is financial marital, health, or everything. You have been doing your best along with your wife to raise them as per these expectations. But for some unknown reason to you, one of your sons ends up being a serial killer. Is it your and your wife's fault? But this logic is background, Almighty God created everything including the evil, Satan or devil. But the devil out of his own conscious free will thought of himself to be better than Adam and refused to obey Almighty God's instructions out of pride, jealousy, and hatred towards Adam. Therefore, you cannot blame God. Evil is the absence of good, just as darkness is the absence of light. Essentially, you are the creator of your evil actions, as mentioned in the Quran, Quran 17 13-15 we have bound every human's destiny to their neck. And on the day of judgment, we will bring forth to each person a record which they will find laid open. And it will be said, read your record. You alone are sufficient this day to take account of yourself. Whoever chooses to be guided, it is only for their good. And whoever chooses to stray, it is only to their loss. No soul burdened with sin will bear the burden of another. And we would never punish a people until we have sent a messenger to, to warn them. Is being good because you fear God, really being good? Yes, absolutely example, by following the law and being a good citizen are you being good? Who is stopping you from committing crimes? You have the choice to be a criminal despite the existence of laws, but you choose to be a good citizen. And to constantly seek to be a better version of yourself for the love of God and obeying Him, then Almighty God will reward you accordingly. But let me ask why when a follower of Islam commits a crime, Others are quick to blame the entire Muslim population, but when a Muslim does a good deed, his faith is not given any credit, it just goes to show the dualism and hypocrisy of some non-Muslims. The correct application of the teachings of Islam will make any bad person a good person, and a good person a better person. But the correct application of atheism will not make any person any different from what they already are, 
basing morality on atheism showed us historically that the worst tyrants and dictators in human history most of them were atheists such as Stalin in Russia. This is a favorable point for Islam and all points of Islam are favors from Almighty Allah to us. There are loads of beautiful Islamic teachings that I can copy and paste about this point, but I will share just one here in order not to make this a longer article. For more, any reader may refer to the Quran and read the entire holy book, which is full of guidance. God says in the Quran, Quran 41:35, good and evil cannot be equal. Respond to evil with what is best, then the one you are in a feud with will be like a close friend.